Our job, uh, whether you're a writer or a painter or a dancer or whatever, or a parent, well, our job is to show up. Our job is to uh, put the pen to the paper, to play the music, and to, to be that so that, that when that spirit although it may not be a, a distant, empty thing, but something within us so that we can hear it when it comes. She tells the story of a poet by the name of Ruth Stone, who's now 90 years old. And Ruth Stone said that she sort of catches the poems as they come through. And when she was a little girl and she was working in the fields, she would hear and feel the poem coming at her from across the landscape. And she said what she would do is she would run home as fast as she could to get her pen and pencil so that she could write down the poem before it kept going and found another poet. <laughs> Elizabeth Gilbert said that she at one time got home just in time and she reached out and felt like she literally grabbed the poem by the tail and wrote the poem down backwards but perfectly intact. This is no different from what Paul McCartney has shared in some of his writings when he wrote the tune to yesterday, it came through full and complete. In fact, he thought he had heard it someplace else and he originally called it scrambled eggs, thinking that he would play it for everybody new and, they'd say, and he'd say, do you know this song? And everybody's like, nope, never heard that song because it was so complete and it was so downloaded that he couldn't quite believe that it just moved in through him in that way. And I think later when he added the lyrics to that, that it's almost like he was writing to his future self for when he lost Linda through cancer, you know, his wife of 30 years. You know, when you listen to the words of yesterday, yesterday all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. It's almost like he was writing a song of comfort to his future self. Um, the writer of the words of the battle hymn of the Republic, Julia Ward Howe, shares a similar experience where she woke up in the middle of the night and she had to get that paper and download the, the words to that song. And Tom Waits, the singer-songwriter, said it this way. He said, I think everybody's looking for something that they've never seen before. You work on your songs, but your songs also work on you. So you absorb and you excrete and in some way you retain and slowly you start to become some place that songs are passing through. Everybody likes to be around someone who does something well and loves doing it, so songs would be no different, right? <laughs> and the songs would say, hey, let's blow down and see that guy and give him a song. Elizabeth Gilbert shares a story too of Tom Waits where she said he was driving in his car and um, this, a song came to him. And he didn't, he started to panic because he didn't have a paper, he didn't have pencil, didn't have a tape recorder. And he said, but then all of a sudden he stopped and he just looked up at the sky and he says, do you not see that I'm driving right now? <laughs> you know, that we can trust that process to keep coming back and to show up and to come through us again and again and again. When the Sufi dancers in, in North Africa would dance, they would dance and they would do it very well every night. But every once in a while when they would dance, uh, they would become transformed and transmuted and they would become beings of light and they would be God incarnate. And the people would chant around them, Allah, 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 God because they see it. And you've seen it in some performances, haven't you? You've seen it in some music where you see Allah, you see God coming through in that moment. And it is said that the word Allah is ole in Spanish, is part of Allah. So when we like something, it's ole, it's ole, it's bravo, it's, it's seeing God in the creation, seeing God. And again, you know, you can give the best performance, you can write the best piece, you can create the best meal. And the next day, you may wake up as a human. You could do the greatest dance and wake up the next day with sore feet, yeah? And a sore back. And how do you live in that kind of world? How do you live with that kind of experience? You invite it in. 
and release it, just as the Greeks and the Romans did. So as we move into summer, we recognize that summer is awfully short in Seattle. We get this light, we get this sun, it's wonderful. So let's be like kids. Let's be children again and let's create, whether it's through the artist's way or, or through Karen Drucker or through playing with your friends and riding your bike, be creative. Allow the imagination to step in and to play with you because each one of us here is a co-creator of God and it's what we came here to do. Without creativity, we replicate what already is over and over again. And there's something unique and special that can only come through you. Mitch was saying it earlier today that what if, that what needs to come through you can only come through you throughout all time. Only you can bring it. So we are surrounded by a community of artists in many forms. So may my prayer for us is that we reach out to one another and we share in our gifts in our spiritual community. As you go forth, be creative. Amen. <laughs>